project in, so... Snack Pop Studios. Content is not consent. Intense content, mature themes, it's only fiction until it's not. And when it is not, you could face criminal charges. Warning, the following game is an erotic horror dating sim meant to blend disturbing and frightening subject matter with arousal and romance. Subject matter can may include murder, gore, violence, psychological horror, emotional manipulation, abuse, and other generally disturbing materials. Players, please be advised of this and only play it with full personal consent. Reproducing any of the scenarios in this game may constitute illegal actions. Do not attempt to seek out relationships of this nature. Murder, emotional manipulation, and other such actions in real world scenarios is abuse. Minors under the age of 18 are unwelcome to play this game. It's illegal for minors to partake in pornographic adult sexual content. Ignoring this warning actively puts the game and its community and its creator in legal, ethical jeopardy. So yes, you have been warned. Please be careful. <laughs> and here today we are playing Something's Wrong with Sunny Day Jack which is a 18 plus only psychological horror dating sim. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing things a bit differently with this one today. I am struggling to upload videos at the moment because uh, it's the Christmas rush for dog groomers. Everyone wants the dog grooming, so I'm so booked up. So I'm struggling to find time to record and edit videos. But I'm gonna cut this one up a bit which will make it easier for me to record and edit and then put it up. I am sorry about that, having to cut it up into smaller increments. It's just what's going to be easiest for me to do at the moment with be at work being so busy. So yeah, let's get on with it. Something's wrong with Sunny Day Jack. Where am I? Da -da -da I don't mean to be rude, but I don't remember seeing a face like yours before. Da -da -da Come to think of it, it's been a while since I've seen anyone at all. <laughs> da -da -da I haven't slept in ages, but you, I don't know you. I don't think this is a dream this time. I think. You're real, right? It's okay. You don't need to be scared. I'm sure that you and I will become fast friends soon enough. But where are my manners? I don't believe I've even caught your name. You do have one, don't you? My name is... Emma. Emma, is that right? Yes, smiley face. It's nice to meet you, Emma. Nice to meet you too. Dot dot dots. You don't know what it's been like for me in there. How come you're not telling us your name? It's been hell. <laughs> for a second there, I almost thought God had abandoned me. Dot dot dots. But I'm sure it was all one big mistake. We all make mistakes, even at the best of times. All that matters now is that I have a new friend. And we can spend the rest of forever doing all sorts of fun things together. And I'll never have to be lonely ever again. It's so cold in there. Tush shots. Bizarre. <laughs> For as long as I can remember, I've never really been the type of person to go out of their way to relive my childhood. I mean, I had a fine one, I guess. But it really wasn't anything special, and being an adult has its own perks too. Driving cars and having your own money is pretty nice. I don't think I'd trade it for homework and not being able to open childproof caps. These days a lot of my friends are having kids, or are spending their money on nostalgic things. That's fine for them, I guess. 
but I don't usually tend to do that kind of thing. I don't make the kind of cash to be able to do that anyways. I like to think I was pretty mature for that reason. At least compared to some people, right? I like nostalgic things. <laughs> Ta -da -ta -ta. There is one exception though. Oh, I guess there was one. I was just calling to see how you're doing. You haven't answered any of my texts. I, I, I know this is my fault. You don't have to be okay. I wouldn't be in your shoes. But please, let me know you're okay. I'm all right. <laughs> Still alive, at least. Hi. <laughs> Why? That's bizarre. Tata tots. Did we just hang up on him? Or is that a message? Don't be rude! We don't like rude people. It's me again. You're not posting online anymore. Are things okay? We were stalker. <laughs> we got a stalker already! That was quick. <laughs> I literally can't tell. Please. Message me back when you have the time. Work going okay? Or are you eating? I miss you. I'm worried about you. Text me. Dots. Dot dot dots. Okay. Dots. You remember when we were kids? You'd be the one to ask my mom if I could sleep over at your place. Because I was too scared to do it myself. You'll never know how much that meant to me. How much you mean to me. I was the one that made that hard to believe. Wasn't I? Da -da -dots. I'm gonna fix us. But there's no us without you. And... I need you. We've fallen out with our childhood friend. I'm sorry every day. I'll be sorry every day of my life. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> mm, do I forgive him? I'll forgive him. He sounds sincere. I can't do it without you. Answer me, please. If you can hear me. Answer me. I love you. That's... I don't think we care. <laughs> no more. I should know better than to hang on to the past. Nostalgic comforts, they never last. And even if it looks the same, it never is. So, best just to grow up and move forward. Be strong enough so that when things do change, you're not leaning on them and you can support yourself. That's wise. Da -da -dots. I won't lie, I've been eager to discard these childish things from my life. Almost recklessly so. Da -da -dots. Maybe that's why I'm where I am today. Da -da -dots. There's lots of dots in this. Haunted by the ambassador of things past. Things simple and colourful and childish. Maybe that's why I'm being haunted by a children's TV show host. <laughs> Will that Jack or is there going to be a different Jack? Good morning, sunshine. Gotta just get the shower. You do get. Okay, no one expecting that. Oh dear. Morning, Jack. Oh dear. You scared the shower. Me. Can we not do that again, please? <laughs> oh yeah. Tots. We're not very talkative, are we? It's time to get up now. Sun's high in the sky, and we wouldn't want to miss out on such a beautiful day, would we? You're very positive. Tots, tots. I feel him. I feel his weight in the mattress, and how the blankets took beneath his weight. I don't even turn to look. I know he's there. Tots, tots. 
Hey now, sleep is good for you, but too much of anything, even sleep, can be bad too. Come on, let's get going. He's nudging me gently. The feral sleep deprived part of my mind is telling me to shove him over the side of the bed. But something about how gentle he's bestering me makes me feel bad enough about that thought to put it aside. I throw the blankets over my head and tuck into my cocoon deeper. Come on, Jack. Not today. It's Saturday. Saturdays are for sleeping in. So we talk to our little imaginary friend ghost person. I feel him shift slightly, maybe even a little closer. Saturdays can be for lots of other things too, though. Like walks in the park, or trips to the museum. Oh, or even breakfast pancakes? Well then, I have to admit that's a new one. An intriguing one too. Dots. Pancakes. Pancakes. What kinds? Blueberries, my specialty, but I can't make them from bed. <laughs> Curse my incurable laziness and insatiable hunger for foods that require actual cooking. It compels me to get out of bed. That's... That's... I sit up and open my eyes. Sure enough, there he is. In all his primary coloured glory, it's Jack. Or I guess his full name is Sunny Day Jack. Although I'm pretty sure his first name is Jack, maybe it's more of an honorary title? Alright, alright, but tell me this, since when do you make pancakes? Dots. Well, I've never not been able to. Dots. So you can actually cook? He's a useful ghost. I'm not bad. He smiles coolly, yet warmly. It's mature and gentle confidence. I feel my stomach full with butterflies. I haven't felt this happy from being paid attention to from a look since that one camp counselor I had a crush on when I was 12. This man, thing, I don't know what to call him. He's a strange anomaly to be sure. I can touch him, see him, hear and feel him. He's as real to me as anyone else, and I notice the morning sun even catches in his hair, like he is as real as I am. And yet, I'm not really sure he is. It all started a few months ago. I like this music. Dots. 84 incidents. I've been looking for clothes at the local thrift shop. You know, the ones where the wardrobe consists of 75% stolen and borrowed shirt from their ex. And they're too much of a tight one to shop for new clothes in an actual new clothes store. There hadn't been very many quality items on the racks, but while I was there I decided to pick through the messy shelves in the back. You know, the ones filled with ceramic frogs, old alarm clocks and bags of puzzle pieces. I wasn't really seeing anything that caught my attention, and that wasn't abnormal. I got a few funny pictures for my socials, and I was content to consider that my entertainment value for the whole trip. Somewhere in my picking and pulling, something must have happened. I remember knocking over a pile of loosely stacked items, sure, but I don't remember the tape falling into my basket. I just remember showing up to the counter, seeing the employee, pulling it out and ringing it up, wanting to object, and yet being too nervous to really stop them. It was only like a quarter anyways, not really worth the fuss. When I pulled it out later, it looked like your average home movie, black VHS tape with cracked plastic. Just a piece of tape with 84 incident written on the front in faded marker. It could have made for a decent horror movie prop. At the time I was holding on to some belongings of a friend. He was a big enough nerd that he had a VCR. Before I threw it away, I figured I'd see what was on it at least. That's how horror movies start. Like I said though, that was a few months ago. I don't remember what was on that tape. I must have been really tired or something because I blacked out. I can't remember anything about it and the tape doesn't seem to work anymore. But since I woke up that one day, Sunny Day Jack has just been there. From what I've been able to glean, he's connected to the tape. He often references his friends, the Sunny Time crew. 
A few times I was tempted to think that a crazed man had just come into my apartment and started living there. But then I made a few observations that led me to believe that maybe, just maybe, I was going insane. That's. They were having me do a lot of unpaid overtime, so it was a logical conclusion at the time. But over time, I began to also gather more data. First things first, only I can see him. At work, at the store, everywhere I go, not a single other person has been able to see him. I'm the only one who can touch him, and everyone else seems to conveniently exist around him. Secondly, he doesn't show up in mirrors, reflections, anything like that. And so I've begun to think he's more of a ghost, or maybe even a spectre of some kind. And maybe I'm just being haunted by the ghost of a clown or something. Any attempts to ask the internet about him have remained fruitless. Nobody seems to know anything about a sunny time crew, or cloudy town. Even if he willingly offers to answer any question I can ask, I can only ask so many questions before even I can barely make sense of what he's saying. It's like he came from another planet sometimes. It's usually quite frustrating. But today, it's not so bad, because I don't care what he is. Whatever he is, is something that can make me pancakes. And that means pancakes for me that I don't have to make. Before I know it, I'm up and out of the bathroom, mouth testing freshly of toothpaste and mouthwash. I really hope he isn't planning on serving pancakes with orange juice. Why would you brush your teeth before you eat? That's so gross. <laughs> I enter the kitchen, to my half surprise, and half not. There he is, mixing a bowl of pancake batter. The dishes in the sink are neatly stacked and there's not even a mess. He's actually been cleaning up as he cooks. Good lad. Whatever the outlook on life has made him that kind of person who can do that, I wish I had it too. He turns to the stove and ladles out a healthy dollop of batter, speckled with round, plump blueberries. When did I even buy blueberries? He then turns his back to me and grins. Look at you, all fresh-faced and starry-eyed. Ready to tackle the day? <laughs> Very positive. <laughs> Maybe. That was a trick question. No morning is complete without a nice breakfast. Gotta put some fuel in that tank before you can get all revved up. He talks so enthusiastically about being healthy. Usually people like this are annoying, but something about the way he does it makes me feel fuzzy inside, and I actually want to do it. It feels attainable and reasonable, and like it comes from a place of genuine concern for my well-being. What is this man? Um, are you okay? Ack, I jump as I return from the realm of warm fuzzies and back to reality. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm not used to having someone around that cares about that kind of stuff, that's all. His gaze softens. Well, you'd better get used to it, because I'm not going anywhere. And with that, the cakes are plated and breakfast is served. It was only three cakes, but afterwards I'm stuffed to the brim. Jack mentioned something about them being made with love, but I don't see how that equates to them being more filling. It strangely does make sense though. Clean up is quick and I help some, as thanks for the meal. As I put the last dish away, I stop and glance at the clock on the wall. Wow, it's really only 8.30? It feels like it should be noon. That would be the beauty of starting the day nice and early dawning on you. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was bad. Groan. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I know. But you have to admit, it got at least a little bit of a rise out of you. <laughs> That's terrible. You're terrible. Well, you know why they call me Sunny Day Jack? <laughs> no, but I'm scared to ask any further. Because I've got jokes for days. <laughs> Toss. I've never felt more betrayed in my life. Aw, uh, don't be like that. <laughs> I give him a playful shove and we get our giggles out. It all feels so natural and healthy and wholesome. It's like he's my best friend. Am I really getting attached to this guy? 
Now I know I must be going crazy. Still, I say nothing about that as I flop onto the couch. If I can't sleep, then at the very least I'll enjoy some morning vegging out. Dots. I turn on the TV and start flipping through the channels. I see Jack staring from the doorway, wistfully, like a puppy looking for an invitation. I give the seat next to me a pat. I got up and I ate your breakfast. Now we get to do something unhealthy as a treat. Well, if I've taught you moderation, I'll consider that my good deed for the day and oblige you. And then, just like that, I'm sat next to a retro clown man. Nice. I don't think too much about what's on TV. In the corner of my eyes, he's still there, still real, still not a dream. It's weird. But I can't deny that the company is nice. He's nice. Really nice. I find myself compelled further to lean against him. Boop. I fall against him awkwardly. He feels like he's falling into a perfectly me-sized baseball mitt. Hi there, friend. Hello. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> he's warm and soft and firm. His shoulders are nice. You getting comfy there? Maybe. Aw, I didn't know it was cuddle time. Let's make this even comfier, huh? Hmm? He shifts around and before I know it, I'm lying head on his chest. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. I feel myself torn between wanting to freeze up and wanting to melt. I feel so protected. What is this witchcraft? He looks down at me with those dark, soft eyes. It, is this okay? Yeah. I'm glad. This is very uh, cute. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be so cute. <laughs> Especially with that intro, oh, Jesus. He's so close now. His smile is so sincere. What? Do I have something on my face? Makeup. <laughs> I feel so protected and cared for. I feel loved. I want to do something. Kiss him and make it. Don't make it weird. <laughs> I am going to kiss him. Thank you very much. Oh dear. <laughs> dear. Without thinking, I leverage his shirt, pulling on it meekly, and lean in. He seems to have been on the same wavelength, because he leans in as well. I'd considered kissing him, but the way he guides me, gently caressing my face, and leading me to his soft, waiting lips makes me feel more mentored than anything. All I can do is hold on tighter. I want to be closer, practically less than a single atom away. He's calm and familiar. It feels so right. I feel one hand drift down my forearm, rubbing it slowly and tenderly. It's almost like an affirmation of how sweetly it lingers. Another hand coaxes me, keeping me never too far as we part. The way he says it sends a surge down my spine. Hung on to him like this, I feel my hips grow heavy against his body. I feel sticky and weighted against him, almost clinging like syrup or ooze. He doesn't let me go, and I feel so relieved when he doesn't. Is... is that okay? I almost entirely forget I hadn't even asked. I don't know what came over me, but he chuckles and nods. Did it make you feel good? <laughs> yeah. He guides me back to his lips once more, giving me another sweet, a beat, brief kiss. I can feel the twitch of his grin as we part. Then of course it's okay. He says in a soft, low voice. He looks at me with lidded eyes as he almost falls in, tilting my chin up and kissing it. I feel my lungs fill with hot air. I can't manage to choke out fast enough as he trails down. It's really good. I don't like the control. His gentle firmness has over me. I adore it. I want whatever's coming next, but I feel out of my mind with the infatuated excitement. Please. Jack 
Jack stops. It's my cell phone. I want to break it in half like a chocolate bar when I pull it out of my pocket and then see it's my boss. Beep. Hey there. I have to compose myself before I open my mouth or else I might really hurt his feelings. Yes, sir? I am so sorry to call you like this, but how quickly can you get down here? What do you mean? Well, Carol just called in sick and nobody's gonna be here if she's gone. And it's a Saturday, so, well, you know how people are. They're gonna want yogurt on Saturdays. <laughs> Dada dots. Can you get down here in 30? I have to run some errands today so I can't stay around. I want to scream. But I like having money more than I like looking for a job. Yes, sir. Great. Thanks for being a team player. See you <laughs> this then. is <laughs> Great. Thanks for being a team player. See you then. <laughs> <Kiss first. laughs> Click. You can come with me though, can't ya? Dodger dots. Well, it's a good thing we got you breakfast when we did. I feel embarrassed, like I just had my mum walk in on me and my crush. And I feel mournful for the lost moment. But all appears not to be as lost as I think. When Jack takes my hand and kisses my wrist. God, it's so silly, but why do I turn to putty when he does? Come on, let's get out there and tackle this day. You won't be alone. I promise. Right, right. Nobody can see him. I feel a bit better about it all. Thank you, Jack. I, I don't know what you would do without me. This is well cute. <laughs> I know we're nuts, but it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. He smiles bright as ever, like a best friend I've had for years. That's what I'm here for. Dots. Dots. More dots. More dots. More dots. It's full on raining when I get to the front door. Because, why not? The clouds must have rolled in earlier, but I hadn't noticed that until I'd gotten outside. And by then it was too late to run all the way back up to my apartment, unlock the door, grab an umbrella, lock the door again and run back down. I figured if I was fast, I could book it. My job wasn't much more than, what, ten minutes away? If I ran and stuck to staying beneath the trees and awnings, I'd be okay. I was wrong. I was so foolish and wrong. Can't my imaginary friend get, can't my imaginary friend get me an umbrella? I fling open the door to Popov's big top yogurt topia with enough strength to make a bear envious. <laughs> That's a funny name. Popov's big top yogurt topia. Oh dear. Swick Sanatorium. Dodge dots. Huh, there you are. I was starting to wonder if you'd ever show up. You said I you said I had half an hour and I made it in ten minutes. Shut up. Dots. I will kill this man. Dots. Yeah, mm, sorry. You kind of caught me on my day off, you know? I uh wasn't really expecting this. He looks at me deftly, like he can't fathom how that and the weather like this could affect my arrival time. Dot dots. Well, you're here now. That's all that matters. Hmm. What a flippant change of tone. Smiley face. Why don't you go freshen up and I'll leave you to do your thing. Again, I am so sorry to inconvenience you like this. Who's gonna come for yogurt when it's raining and thundering? Are you crazy? I would have loved to give you more of a heads up, but, you know, Carol really should have called me sooner too. And if you think about it, we're, we're both caught up in this. <laughs> I had to come in on my day off too, you know. Oh well. No one's coming for yogurt. Somehow, I don't feel like we're on the same level of inconvenience. Dots. I reluctantly head into the back, shake myself off and throw on the garish circus themed apron that completes my employee ensemble. 
The irony of it all. Hallucinating a clown and then going to work dressed like one. <laughs> At least they don't make you wear the nose anymore. Not after the employee had an allergic reaction to the materials they were made of. Rest in peace, Angela. She didn't die from it, did she? <laughs> 